This is a good start to a Monday. <laughs> so my car has got several issues with it. And one of those issues is that oil is just pouring out of it. And um, I'm currently trying to take my car to the garage to get these issues fixed. And turns out I don't think there was enough oil to actually get me to the garage left in the car. Um, because all of a sudden my temperature gauge just shot up. And I felt like I could smell something funny and I was like, oh my god, <laughs> I'm pulling over and switching the engine off. Um, so my dad is bringing me some oil and hopefully that will allow me to actually get to the garage. <sighs> what a nightmare. everyone i am absolutely sure that you are sick of seeing me in this spot in my living room looking like this <laughs> with this same hairstyle with my hair all scraped back and bleh but i'm just so tired all the time i'm off out to the hospital um it's wednesday i can't remember if i mentioned that it's wednesday i haven't filmed since monday my car went into the garage. I think I filmed a bit of that in the morning when I was like basically broken down on the side of the road. Um, my car went into the garage and ended up costing £350 to fix, which I definitely could have done without, but at least those two issues are fixed on my car now. Um, yeah, so that was Monday and I spent the day with my mum while I was waiting for my car to be fixed. And then on Tuesday, uh, yesterday, I just spent the whole morning working on my essay, one of my two essays. Um, and then I took Archie to Agility, which I really didn't want to do. I was just so tired. Like, I just can't describe how tired I am all the time. Um, but I dragged myself out because I thought it might improve my mood. And it did because uh, he had another really good session, which is nice because I think I said last week... He normally just ignores me and does whatever he wants at agility, but the last two weeks he's actually been really good, so that's nice. Um, so I did that, and then when I came home I was just exhausted, so I just vegged on the couch and I tried to do a little bit more reading for this essay, and you can kind of see the stack of books I've got here. My eye, it looks like I've got a really lazy eye, this eye. I think it's where I've been putting like medicine into it for like six weeks now. My eyelid just seems to be like drooping all the time and it looks like I've got a lazy eye. Um, but yeah, so I managed to finish all the reading for that essay, which means today I can actually start writing it. Um, I had an email that my lecture was cancelled um, for this evening, so I'm actually very happy about that because I was gonna force myself to go because I hate missing it. Um, I was gonna force myself despite feeling rubbish, but now I don't have to because it's cancelled. So I'm gonna go to my hospital appointment, come home and start writing. So, my hospital appointment is for my eyes because I personally don't feel that they're getting any better. I can't remember if I've actually like spoken about it in detail, but basically um, some, of, some of it ha has definitely improved, but when I'm not wearing my glasses, if I shut my left eye, my right eye is so blurry I can barely see a thing. And if it's more than about three meters away, it's completely blurry, which it wasn't, you know, it wasn't that way before. Nothing feels right. Um, and my depth perception is all off. My spatial awareness is all off because my right eye is completely different to my left eye. And reading is really, really hard, um, which is why it has taken me weeks to do the research for this essay. Um, because whenever I try to read, the words are all just sort of like swimming on the page. And if I try to look at my phone, um, I normally have to shut my right eye and just use my left eye. Um, but obviously I can't really do that for hours on end when I'm trying to do some research. I've tried using a patch, but that it just doesn't work. Um, I, I'm getting really scared about my eyesight, being totally honest with you. I've had a couple of days where I've gotten really upset over it. Oh, look, my eyes are starting to water now. I don't want to cry. 
Um, but I am getting very concerned over it because I love to read and at the moment I basically can't. It's it's really, really difficult. Um, so I want them to reassure me that maybe I'm experiencing this because there's still some inflammation in this eye and we can fix it. Hello everyone, I'm at my mum's house. My eyes look a little bit crazy because I went to the hospital, to the eye clinic and they've dilated my pupils. So I look a bit like an alien. Um, I didn't really get good news at the hospital, sadly. Um, I d good news and bad news. The good news is that they do think that the uveitis is healing. They can't really see much um, like inflammation in the eye anymore. Sorry, my parents' ducks are quacking. <laughs> um, yeah, they can't see much inflammation in the eye anymore. They sent me for scans as well to sort of doubly make sure because I said to them I was really concerned about the fact that it was so sore all the time and that I couldn't see properly and that I can't read properly and everything. Um, so that's the good news, that they think the uveitis is healing. The bad news is that that means there's another reason why I can't see properly and why I can't read properly and they think that reason is because during the course of me having uveitis some of the pigmentation from my eye has got stuck to my lens um, and the dilation drops that I was using were supposed to prevent that however I stopped using them a week earlier than I normally would because the doctors told me to stop using them and I questioned them and questioned them about it and they assured me it was fine but it turns out it probably wasn't fine because they reckon that some of the pigmentation has stuck to my lens and that is probably what has caused the sight damage and in that case it is probably permanent um, so I've had a bit of a cry to my mum because my sight right now is really bad oh I don't want to get upset, I just keep getting upset every time I talk about it my sight right now is really bad and it's very very difficult to read it's taken me weeks to get anything done for uni and um, I haven't read anything just for the fun of reading since like January so I'm really upset um, that this is potentially just gonna be it now um, and I need to, once I've finished, oh, now the dogs are barking. Once I've finished um, this course of eye drops, I need to go to an optician and have my eyes officially tested again to see if they can give me a different prescription for my glasses to help with close-up work. I've never needed glasses for close-up work before, but now I probably do. It's why I'm struggling so much with reading, but I'm really upset and I just feel rubbish and it's just really not what I wanted to hear but at least the uveitis is healing and hopefully I won't have any more problems with it and it won't get any worse. Ruby had an operation today. Look at her with her little poorly hand. Oh, and that's the wrong hand. Oh, baby girl. <laughs> she, she, had, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> she had a lump removed and she had a dental. And she's got her little t-shirt on to stop herself from getting at her stitches. Poor Ruby. She seems absolutely fine though. <laughs> Hi guys. I have quickly shoved on the clothes that I had on yesterday because I really need some paper for my printer. And I need to go out to Sainsbury's and see if they have any paper there, but it's not a very big Sainsbury's, so I'm not hopeful. Um, but they do have an Argos in there and I used to work at Argos and I have a feeling that they sell printer paper It might be really expensive, but I need paper because I need to print out my essay notes I have done so well today I have completely finished the research for one essay and I have written a quarter of the other one So the one that I finished all the research I really want to just get on and write that today and get it finished, like a first draft finished today. But in order to do that, I really need to print off all my notes and be able to have them like around me properly so I can make a proper plan. And to do that, I need paper for my printer. So off I go. <laughs> 
I managed to get paper and it was really cheap and I picked up some cheap biros as well because this is all I write with guys cheap black biros <laughs> um, I thought I would give you a little update on this crappy Kiki K situation I really don't like the whole name and shame culture like blasting a company on social media like that's just not it's not what I like to do but I'm really 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 mad <laughs> about this situation um so when I'm like just showing you the planner in this light you can't really see any of the things that are wrong with it but trust me I showed you in my last vlog there are several things wrong with this planner um and I'm not happy to keep it basically and it is faulty however they don't believe that it is faulty. Despite the fact that I've seen several people in the planner groups receiving refunds for their planners and being told to keep the planner um, when they have less things wrong with their planner than is wrong with mine. And I'm really annoyed. I think I told you at the end of my last vlog that I emailed them um, just listing all the things that was wrong with it and I sent um, pictures as well. Sorry about my yellow hands by the way and my yellow nails. I accidentally spilt some of the printer ink on me when I was like piercing the thing. That's that's an aside. I've got printer ink on my hands. I'm sorry. But yeah so I emailed them listing all the things that was wrong with it. I sent pictures and they emailed me back the next day. Um, it was a man and he was very patronizing and he basically said None of those things affect the use of the planner. If you've got any more questions, let us know. And I was like, well, actually, two of the things do really affect the use of the planner. The fact that you can barely close the clasp and the rings literally feel like they're gonna fall out. And my best friend is on the Planner Insiders team and I've seen hers, so I know that the planner's not meant to be like that. Um, but anyway, I emailed back and I said, no, nope, I'm not happy with that. The planner is faulty. Like, don't try and fob me off, basically. And I got no, and I said, I want to return it for a refund. If you're not gonna give me an exchange, I want a refund. And I got no reply. So two days later, I sent another email. Um, just like I forwarded the original email onto the customer service email address again and I said I want to speak to a different customer service representative I feel that I've not been taken seriously at all um explained that I felt that he had been very rude explained the whole situation again and I didn't hear anything back until yesterday so that was another two days and then finally I heard back from them and it was him again which I'm really cross at because I specifically said I did not want to speak to him and I feel like they have more than one person working there so whoever received that email clearly just thought it would be funny to forward it on to him and get him to reply to me again and he's left me waiting days for a response and then email back again saying oh yeah if you want a refund you'll have to take it into store um to get a refund or you can pay to post it back to us no it's faulty send me a free returns label i'm really really mad like really mad and so i've sent them a facebook message now i don't know what's going to come of it i do not want to speak to that man again i'm not going to reply to his email i'm really cross i don't understand why i've been treated so differently when the planet is clearly faulty and so many other people have been receiving refunds for purely aesthetic things, whereas there's two design faults wrong with this planner and they won't refund me unless I pay to send it back to them or I travel into London to return it. I'm really cross. <laughs> so as it stands right now, I have 40 pounds worth of planner that I can't use and I'm really, really angry about it, to be honest. It's totally tainted it for me. Even if they offered me an exchange now, I don't think I would take one. I don't want it anymore. I'm, it has ruined the whole thing for me, which is such a shame. Um, but yeah, so I've still got that just sat here. So because I really thought that I was going to get a refund for that without any issues, I then ordered this off of eBay, which is another Kiki K. Um, it's the A5 size, they call it large size, and it is their wedding planner. Now, I'm not engaged yet, um, but Will and I do talk about getting married all the time, 
I'm pretty sure it's on the cards for this year. Um, I like to think so anyway. We've been together six years this year and like I say, we talk about it all the time. We pretty much already know what we want for our wedding and I knew that once we got engaged, I would buy this planner. This is the planner that I wanted to plan our wedding. Um, and it's still on the Kiki K website for £51. So that's quite a lot of money, but as like an engagement present to myself when we eventually got engaged, that is the planner that I was gonna buy. And then I found it on eBay for £15 and I started watching it and I, I told Will that I was gonna buy it and he sort of laughed at me and said, well, you're getting yourself a bargain <laughs> if you were gonna buy it full price. Um, so yeah, for ages it was £15. And then right down at the last minute, somebody bid 20. So I quickly bid 21 and I managed to get it. So I got it for 21 pounds. Um, it's still 51 pounds on the website and it has got all of the inserts and it is in like immaculate mint condition. It's still got the ring protectors in and everything. So I'm really happy with this one. And it just goes to show like, this is what a Kiki K planner is meant to be like. Not that. <laughs> so, it hasn't ruined the brand for me. They're still one of my favorite planner brands, but it's the whole experience with that particular customer service rep has definitely ruined the B6 planner for me and I just don't want it anymore. So I'm really hoping that they'll come back to me on Facebook with a fair conclusion. Please excuse the fact that my kitchen is an absolute tip and that there's washing up on the side that needs doing and a baking tray that needs to go away and it's all just a mess. But I just came out here to get a drink. And look how beautiful the sunshine looks coming through the window. It's so lovely. Spring is coming. And after hours sat in the living room writing my essay, it was so nice to turn around and see this. It's just such a nice sunny day. And apparently it's going to be sunny for the next week. And I'm just so happy about it. When you just can't be bothered. <laughs> What is this little leg up in the air? And why does his face look so scared? What's up, little nugget? Excuse all of the mess. I'm having another essay writing day today. It is 25 past 11. I've already written another 800 words. Oh, yawning. <laughs> I've already written another 800 words, um, which means I have about 1200 words to go until this essay is finished. And then I can print off this first draft of it, um, edit it and hopefully, <laughs> hopefully get it all finished so that I can actually submit it today because I would really like to have one of them just out of my hair. However, I am meeting some of my friends for dinner at half past five because I haven't seen any of them in ages and my best friend is visiting from Poole um, and I haven't seen her in so long. So I'm meeting them for dinner at half five. It's just coming up to half 11 and I still need to have a shower and wash my hair and do something with my hair. Um, and for me, that takes a good couple of hours. So I really do need to crack on with this now and, and get as much of it done as possible because I really want to finish it today. Hello everyone, just your daily dose of reality with Chloe today. This is the state of me currently. Um, I was in hospital yesterday and my Health has definitely taken a bit of a nosedive again over the last couple of days and my pain levels have been really bad and I'm just feeling really, really grotty. So sorry about this, but um, I just wanted to update you because I can't remember the last time I actually filmed. But yeah, so I finally submitted one of my essays. I was working really hard on that last week and on Saturday I managed to get that submitted finally. Um, I'm not certain that it's going to get any sort of decent grade but as long as I pass I'm happy with that because I just wanted it submitted. Um, the other one is due tomorrow because I had another one as well and I'm trying to work on it today but I'm struggling because a lot of the books that I needed are in my university library and I just haven't been well enough to get to the library to collect the books. So there's a lot of stuff like research missing basically. And I'm just 
I don't know. I don't really know where I'm going with it, so that's a bit of a worry. I don't know, like, what I'm doing at all. I had a general anaesthetic yesterday and I had some exploratory procedures done so that my doctor could see exactly where my Crohn's is active in my digestive system at the moment. I won't bore you with all the gory details, but um, the preparation before was pretty awful. The procedure itself was okay because I was asleep and I got myself into a right state beforehand but the guy, the anaesthetist who put me to sleep, he was absolutely brilliant. I had to have a cannula in my hand and there is just the tiniest little dot on my hand, not even a bruise or anything. Whereas if you heard me talk about my MRI in my last vlog, I fainted when she did my cannula because she messed it up so badly. So this was a, a very different experience. Um, and falling asleep was actually okay. Like, I always get so scared about it beforehand, but actually it was fine. And recovery and everything was fine. I was just very tired yesterday and I'm very tired today. And I feel like my voice feels a little bit croaky and funny. I feel tired and um, they said that might happen because they put like a breathing tube in your throat. So yeah, plus I still have this cold that I've had for like six weeks. So yeah, I'm already ranting, okay. <laughs> rambling even going on um the good news is that I don't need any surgery which I'm so happy about I mean to my knowledge I don't anyway this definitely sounded like from what he said I didn't need any surgery um the bad news is that the ulceration in my digestive system is quite extensive and it is pretty bad but I already knew that because of how ill I am um but yeah, I'm just relieved that I don't need any surgery. Um, because the ulceration is quite extensive, there's a treatment that they would like me to try, um, which I'm currently researching, because I'm not really sure it's the route I want to go down, but I'm definitely gonna research it. And um, you have to have testing to make sure you're suitable for that treatment, because if you've had exposure to any like certain infections in the past, you're not suitable for the treatment. So while I was in hospital, they thought it would be a good idea for me to have that screening done. So I had to go and have a chest X-ray and I had to have blood tests as well. And now I'm just freaked out about the results of those because it's stuff that I've never thought to get screened for before. Um, because again, touch wood, I've always figured it didn't, it just wasn't applicable to me. But now I'm like, oh my God, what if I do have that? Oh my God, what if I have been exposed to that? And it's just like, I was so relieved when I woke up from the anesthetic and like, I just thought everything's over, it's all done. And then they threw this whole next round of testing on me and I'm like, now I have to worry about the results of those. So I just want everything to be done and to move on to some treatment now, but I just thought I would update you. Um, and now I need to go back to trying to somehow write this essay. So this morning I started out at 560 words and I'm now at 788 and it's 10 past two. So I've really not made much progress at all. I've got some scribbled notes next to me. I really don't know what I'm doing with this essay. I literally have no idea. I've decided I'm probably not going to go to uni tonight because I just feel dreadful. And yeah, I'm feeling quite frustrated to be honest. I've got my little constant companion with me. People probably wonder where on earth Winnie is but she's just always in her bed. Like, that is her favorite spot. <laughs> she's in there. If I call her, she'll probably pop up. Winnie. 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 <laughs> she can't get out, but she's in there. I promise. Right guys, excuse the um, dishwasher in the background, but it's now Thursday morning and I can't remember um, when I last showed you my progress, but I'm now at just over 1500 words and I've got one last section uh, to write. And I've made myself a little plan now. I've got my stack of books next to me so that I can pick out a few relevant quotations 
and I'm nearly done. Um, I made the decision not to go to work today because I woke up in a lot of pain still and I've um, still got a really upset tummy from the bowel preparation that I had to <laughs> drink um, and that was way back on Monday and it's now Thursday so I wasn't expecting to still have such an upset stomach but I really do and obviously you don't really want to go to work when you're feeling like that do you so um, I, I called in sick and I told them that I would take today and tomorrow off and um, try again on Monday <laughs> I really do hate doing that especially because I've had so much time off already um, since Christmas but this flare-up has been one of the worst I've ever had and if it's taught me anything it's that I have to put myself first so I'm putting myself first and I'm taking the time off that I need and if I need more time off I'll take that off as well. Because people like hearing about my masters I thought I would show you some of the books that I'm looking at. So my dissertation is on the changing perceptions of Henry VIII's wives throughout popular culture um, in comparison to contemporary representations of them so portraits contemporary eyewitness accounts that sort of thing in comparison to later popular culture and i'm looking at all six wives instead of just one of them um, and i'm going to be using a form of a, a series of case studies so each chapter is going to be a case study so it might be on um, a selection of novels or plays or films or television adaptations um, so I've got a few biographies on just some of the wives here that I want to mention in my research proposal and also I'm going to have to engage with some theoretical works on adapting history for film or adapting history for the historical novel, that sort of thing. Um, I haven't read um, all of these in full yet but I would recommend this one, The Six Wives of Henry VIII by Antonia Fraser. Um, I really enjoyed that one and I think she has quite a balanced approach. Retha Warnicke is also really good and this biography of Catherine of Aragon by Gareth, Garrett Mattingly is um, quite like thorough as well. Um, I haven't read this one yet about Catherine Howard which is called Young and Damned and Fair and I can't wait to read that one because I just find Catherine Howard like fascinating <laughs> um but yeah those are some books i'm looking at this morning determined to get this done in the next few hours and i will speak to you when i do i finished my essay and i'm still not going to show myself because i really do look awful but i did it <laughs> three hours before the deadline and i managed to submit it please ignore the state of our bathroom we are getting it done eventually i know it's disgusting um and old but it's done. So now I'm having a bath. I've got some um, Plan of Dreams bath dust in the water and it's completely dissolved because I didn't put that much in but the bath water smells amazing. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna enjoy this bath. I'm gonna read a book that I actually just want to read for the first time in months. I've got a cup of tea and I'm gonna put on some music and I just cannot wait. <laughs>